those and ask uh, Gabby questions on your behalf. So I'm going to pass it over to Gabby now. Thanks everyone for joining us again and we hope you enjoy. Thank you very much Shona. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Gabby and uh, I welcome you all uh, to the Let's uh, uh, Go Fly a Kite uh, online workshop. And uh, I thought because uh, making a kite is, is a fascinating uh, thing, uh, I was thinking of showing you uh, a few slides about uh, uh, the history of kite making and, and a few other things, what, what is good to know about kites. Um, so I'm just going to find my slide. Technical difficulty, but I will I will get it in a minute. <laughs> Apologies for that. <laughs> okay, it should be fine now. So I, I hope you can all see my my slides. Um, and I'm just going to move this. So uh, we are going to make a bird-shaped uh, kite uh, today. And uh, the reason for that, because I, I, I did a little bit of research on, on kite, and uh, I found that probably the first kites uh, um, uh, were made 2,500 uh, 2, or three, even 3,000 years ago. And the first uh, written evidence is uh, coming from uh, uh, from China. Okay, so the, the, the first ones are coming from China and uh, according to some, uh, uh, some pictures, the first kites what people were making were mostly uh, uh, the, in the shape of an animal, uh, very often the shape of a bird because uh, most likely people were uh, watching uh, birds flying and that's where they uh, uh, got the idea. Of, uh, of making some kites. Uh, come, uh, but uh, kites come in all sorts of shapes uh, and uh, sizes as well. Um, and now they are very popular all over the world. You can see here as well some lovely uh, butterfly shaped uh, kites. And uh, uh, I found some, some uh, really nice uh, kites. They are approximately 150 year old uh, kites. Uh, from the National Air and Space Museum uh, in Washington, D.C. And you can see some of the, the different types, uh, 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 even uh, from birds as well. Um, and the other shape which, were, which is quite popular was uh, uh, the fish uh, shape. And uh, later on, when we are going to uh, decorate our kites, uh, something to bear in mind, if you look at the, 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 the upper two uh, kites, uh, the butterfly on the, on the left and, and uh, uh, a, a figure on, on, on the right. The shape of the kite is, 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 is almost the same, but only uh, what makes the difference between the two is how it's decorated, how it's painted. So this is something to bear in mind for later that uh, although we are going to make a, a bird-shaped kite, uh, but uh, if you decorate it uh, uh, differently, it can look like a, a different animal uh, as well. So here as well, that uh, looks like a, like a, a bird-shaped kite, but painted uh, with a human figure. And uh, here there is another one from the, the same uh, museum. And you can see here that the shape of this one is almost the same like the, the previous two, uh, but a, 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 a finch or a carp is, is uh, painted on it. So um, just to, to start your, your imagination flying, in Japan, very often uh, they made a square uh, or rectangle shaped kite. You can see one here from the Metropolitan Museum of Art as well. And uh, a little bit about the, the, the function of the kite as well. What were people using uh, kites for? I mean, partially probably just to have fun and, and uh, to enjoy uh, uh, seeing the uh, kites fly. But uh, they also, uh, you, you may have heard about kite fishing, uh, where a kite is helping uh, uh, the, the, the fisherman uh, to catch uh, the fish. 
other things what what people used to use a uh, uh, kites for uh, for de delivering messages to, to a far distance or you can also send uh, some radio signals uh, from uh, from a kite uh, you can also measure the weather because uh, if you let up a kite a couple of meters above the, the earth, you can you can check the temperature or the humidity, and you can also a, a kite can actually help you to measure distance. Um, and of course, from from uh, from a kite, you can also photograph uh, the earth as well because you you, you will get a, a bird's eye view uh, of, of the earth. And uh, interestingly, a uh, bigger kite can also lift up passengers skyward as well, um, which is uh, which is a great thing as well. And, and these days, kites are mostly made for for fun, uh, but they are also made uh, for uh, sports as well. Now you can see here that probably uh, people got the idea to make an aeroplane as well maybe uh, partially from, uh, from the kite as well. Uh, some of these early inventions may not have worked fully. So it's great that this is not how we have to uh, fly these days. Uh, and there are different uh, uh, shape uh, kites as well. There are eight different uh, kind of structures what, what uh, 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 people can make. They can be quite simple as well, and, uh, uh, but, but, but also quite uh, complicated as well. So uh, uh, on different festivals and competitions, people are making all sorts of kites. Uh, maybe after your bird one, you can have a, a, a go with that one. Although I think it's a, it's a very, very complex one, very interesting one. And kites can really be uh, any shape. This is a 27 meter long uh, octopus. Uh, it's uh, made a little bit differently but the principle of flying is exactly the same like on your, on your kite, what we are going to make today. And of course, you can, you can use it for different sports as well. Uh, uh, kite surfing this is quite popular. And if you go out to Klontarf, to uh, North Pool Island, you can see all of these uh, uh, kite surfers uh, there in Dublin as well. But why do kites fly? I would ask the question from you, but unfortunately I won't hear your answer. So I'm, 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 uh, uh, but I can, I can hear that probably you are saying that uh, the kites are really flying because of the wind. And what the wind does to the kites that, that it uh, drags it uh, uh, backwards, but also it lifts it up. So there is a lot of science uh, uh, involved in kite making. We could see earlier in, in the beautiful painted uh, kites that there is art involved in it, there is science, uh, and there could be a lot of maths. Uh, it's it's a, a really interesting uh, object. So let's see what are really the parts of, of, of the kite, because every kite has a sail. You can see some of them behind me. Uh, uh, some of them bigger than the ones we are going to, uh, to make today. So the sail is the, the, the surface, what's going to, to, to catch uh, uh, the, the wind. And then we are going to make a, a frame uh, for your kite uh, uh, out of some uh, bamboo skewers or, or some other pieces of wood or, or, or straws. And uh, there is one uh, 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 which will be the spine, which will be at the middle of your kite. And then in our kite, there will be only one crossbar, but on more complicated kites, you can have several crossbars as well. Then once we will be ready with that, then we will need some strings. Uh, um, we are going to uh, take from two points, uh, two strings. Uh, and these are called the bridles on the, on the kite. And then these will be all collected into one kite line what you can hold in your hand, and that's how you are going to fly your kite. And then if you have a couple of meters of line, then it's the best to store it on the kite spool, so you are not going to get the, the thread or the, 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 the yarn tangled. And the tail is really, really important on a kite, because if your kite doesn't have a, a tail, then it doesn't balance in the air as easily. Uh, so it's not only uh, pretty to have a tail on, on, on a kite, but, but it has uh, its own function as well. And with all of these parts, uh, what, what the kite is, 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 is going to, to have, that is going to slide through the air 
uh, and, 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 and the wind nicely. And that's basically the aerodynamic of the kite. So these are really important things uh, in, in, in kite making. Although we are going to make a very simple one, an enjoyable uh, one, uh, but still all of these uh, 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 principles we are going to think about. So let's make a kite. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to uh, switch over my, my camera and I'm going to talk you through all the materials, what, uh, what you can use for, for your kite making. Okay, I'm just going to turn the picture over and I hope you can see uh, my picture. So, uh, as I said, we need, uh, we need uh, uh, for our kite a sieve. So the sieve, you can make it from different types of uh, uh, paper. Uh, you can use some, some, some newspaper. You can cut a, a piece of uh, plastic from, from a plastic bag. You can just use an old drawing or some, some printed page. I have some wrapping paper here as well, uh, what I cut a, a piece out of. That's just a, a packaging for, for some chocolate. And uh, you can also use uh, some, uh, um, some uh, parchment paper or tracing paper, uh, or just simply a, 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 a colored uh, a paper. The size, what we are going to work with, will be, will be an A4 size. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, it's a, a little bit like, a, like a, a, a bigger book, what you have, but it's nice to start with a, with a rectangle shape. Uh, I'm going to build this uh, sail from parts, just because I, I don't know exactly uh, how old my participants are on this workshop. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to show as well, if there are some older ones as well, how you can make the, the whole shape out of just one paper. But the first thing is just have, have any of these papers approximately an A4 size. We are also going to need uh, either some, uh, some gardening uh, sticks, uh, these green ones, uh, two, two is enough, or you can use uh, um, just uh, bamboo skewers. So it's, it's ju you just need one uh, type. Um, you can also use, I have some uh, paper straws or some, some plastic straws as well. You could experiment using some, some sticks from the garden, which are light and straight, uh, but sometimes, uh, sometimes they don't fly as well. So you would just have to have to check it out. Uh, we also need something uh, what we can glue uh, your uh, uh, pieces with. You can either use PVA, you can use just a, a glue stick, you can use cellar tape or, or uh, duct tape or, or even electric tape uh, can be used. You need some kind of a yarn or thread. Uh, I have some twine here. It's good if, if, if your twine is strong. Uh, we don't want it to be very thick, so try to use a, a thinner one. You may want for decoration some coloring pencils and, and some uh, felt pens, some stickers or some lighter uh, tissue paper. For the tail, you can use uh, strips of uh, newspaper, you can use some uh, um, crepe paper or just uh, pieces of, uh, pieces of uh, fabric, or if you have some ribbon. You can, you can use that as well. Uh, the other thing what we need, uh, this is for your spool where you are going to uh, put your, your, or your thread. Either you, you take some sticks uh, from the garden uh, or we can just uh, make it out of uh, some cardboard uh, rectangle and you are going to need a pair of scissors. We are not going to need any other uh, um, dangerous uh, uh, tools. Okay, so let's start making the, uh, um, uh, Hi Gabby, sorry, just before you get into the making, uh, we just have one question. Yeah. Rose is wondering, they don't have any straws or bamboo, are there any other ideas for what they could use? Yes, I'm actually going to show, when, when I get to the, the frame making, I'm going to show you how you can make kind of a straw out of a newspaper. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to show that when we get there. Is that okay? Fantastic, thanks very much. 
Super. Okay, so we are going to start with the sales. So I'm just going to move uh, everything else away from me so you can, you can see only the sale here. Okay, so we are going to make, uh, I'm going to use uh, an orange and, and a green uh, paper for that so you can see it well. But as I said, you can equally use any of these. So, so the good thing is if, if you have an A4 size uh, cut out, okay, it doesn't have to be uh, uh, straight because we are, going to, uh, we are going to cut them, okay. So I'm going to start with, uh, with the orange paper and uh, I'm going to create the two wings of the bird out of this. And then I'm going to separately put the beak on it and separately put the tail on it, okay? If someone is older, you could do that all in just one drawing, but sometimes it's not easy to do that, okay? So uh, what you have to do, you have your A4 uh, page and you have to fold it into half, okay? So this is how you fold it into half. Okay, and just uh, press the, the line down with your fingers. I'm just going to put here for you a sign that this is your folded edge. Okay, so this is how I open it up because you can't really see it now. So this is where it's folded. So now in order to make the wing, you, you need a pencil or, or, or a pen. And then, uh, not on the folded edge, but on the other side, you may want to take a little bit off from the shape, okay? It can be, I'm going to draw it on, on different ways. So you can just take off a corner like that, okay? But if you want from here, you can do a little bit of wave, okay? Again, we try not to take too much of it or you can kind of make it more kind of spiky, okay? So the next thing will be, once you have your, your, your uh, folded edge on one side, and you have your, your, your drawn pattern on it, I'm going to show you an easy way how you can, you can cut it out. Because when you are cutting out something which is two layers, sometimes uh, uh, the paper can uh, shift a little bit. So uh, to avoid uh, uh, that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue just into the corner, which is not going to pa be part of the wing, okay? So I just put here a little bit of glue if you uh, only have sellotape, then you can, you can do that with sellotape as well, okay? So you can just uh, sellotape this corner together, okay? So when you are going to start cutting your shape, then the corner is not going to, to start shifting, okay? So I'm just going to cut by the line. As I said, you can just keep it nice and simple and just round it down if you wish, uh, or you can, you can do any kind of shape, something what you, you think a uh, wing would be, would be like. Okay, so we are not going to need this piece. It was really great help for us that it was, it was uh, stuck together. So then you can open it up and this is the two wings for your bird, okay? So the next thing will be, I'm not sure whether to wait a minute or, or I, can, I can show you the next step. So the next thing will be that I'm going to prepare a beak and a tail. Now in a kite, it's really important that everything is symmetric. Okay, so everything is in mirror. So if I put the mirror to the middle, it would be the same on, the bo on both sides. So if I want to add a beak, I'd like it to be symmetric as well. Or if I want to add a tail, I'd like it to be symmetric as well. So I'm going to take another piece of paper. Uh, the beak is not going to be too big, so I'm not going to fold it all the way. I'm just going to fold it a little bit. Okay, so again, that's my folded edge. And then I'm going to draw a beak here to the, the bottom, okay? So something like that, something like two of your fingers is probably plenty. And the length of the beak as well, two or three of your fingers, okay? And then you can, you can join these two dots either with a, with, with a straight line or you can do it a little bit in a curve, okay? And then you can, you can cut it out. 
Here we don't have to tape or glue the piece together because it's only a small piece, okay? Okay, so that's going to be my beak. That's going to come here to the top. Okay, so that will be like that. We are going to glue it together in a minute. And then I'm going to just turn my page over so I, I still have this, this folded edge now on the other side, okay? So I'm, I'm going to create here a tail. Usually how I do it, it could be a little bit wider, okay? So you don't need a, a precise measurement, maybe four of your fingers, and maybe up here as well, you could, you could almost go four fingers up, okay? And I'd like the tail to be a bit wider at the bottom than on the top. So I'm just going to make it a little bit narrower. So I'm going to join these together. Again, it's up to you. If you want a, a, a little bit of a wave in it, you can, you can do that. Okay, so that's my folded edge. And that's going to create my tail. And again, you can cut it out. Okay. So now I, I kind of have everything kind of the, 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 the basic kind of uh, uh, shape. So here is my beak and here is the, the tail. Okay, so now the next thing is we have to attach it, uh, making sure that the, the middle of, of, of everything kind of lines up. Okay, so we, can, we, can, we will still have a, a symmetric shape at the end. You can use either a print stick uh, or, or any any kind of uh, uh, glue or a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, um, PVA. PVA is a little bit more wet uh, uh, so, um, glue, so you have to wait a little bit to dry. Okay, so I'm going to, to do that. If you have a, a glue stick, you can continue with the glue stick, but I'm just going to show if someone only has uh, has a sellotape, has sellotape, then you can. Uh, sellotape the, the tail on. Okay, and we just wait for my camera to zoom back. <laughs> okay, super. Okay, so we just put it here. We sellotape it here. If you don't have uh, um, uh, this glue, you can, you can just use your PVA. So now you should have a, a shape, but if you fold at the middle, it should be symmetric, okay? So it should be the same on the left and on the right as well, okay? Thanks, Gabby. A um, couple it? of people are asking if you wouldn't mind just repeating that again with the beak and the tail cutting. Um, oh, if no that's okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I'm, I'm just going to use my same paper, okay? I'm going to use the same paper, but I'm, I'm just going to, to do it on the other side, okay? So I'm just going to, to fold it in a little bit because I, I don't want a, okay, I don't want a, a big piece. So that's my folded edge now, okay. And uh, here with the beak, you may want kind of two of your fingers to the, uh, to the top two of the fingers or three of the fingers in the length of the, of the beak, okay? And then you can join it, okay? So that's going to be the beak. And for the tail, you can make it a little bit wider. So maybe you can use four of your fingers, okay? You put a little line there, just to, uh, uh, how much you want. You put four fingers here to the side as well. But here I'd like the, the, the tail to be wider at the bottom and narrower on the top. So here beside that spot, I just make another, another mark. And then I'm going to join this up here. Okay, and I'm not going to cut this now. So I, I, I leave it like that for you so you can see what I've been doing. Okay, you can actually see here on the other side, the shapes where I cut out a minute ago. Okay, and I just hoped that the beak is here and the beak is on the top and the tail is here and there. Okay. Now, um, 
if you are ready with that, then the basic sail is, is, is ready. And uh, at that stage, you could decorate uh, your, your uh, kite a little bit. Although I think uh, what we are going to do, maybe I'm going to show you a few decoration uh, options. And then uh, we are, I'm going to give you a little bit of time, but decoration can, some of the kites, and especially if you, if you do a very uh, complicated design, that can take a long, long time. So uh, we may just start decorating it a little bit. And then uh, after maybe 10, five minutes or so, I'm going to show you how you are going to make the frame, if that's okay with everyone. Okay, so can I move this away? I hope everyone saw it, but it will be here if anyone needs uh, how to cut the beak and the, and, 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 and the tail. Okay. Now, uh, so some of the, the ways how you can, how, how you can decorate uh, uh, your, your uh, kite. You can uh, stay on the same side or, or you can decorate it on the other side. And I just have to wait for my camera to zoom a little bit. <laughs> um, so what can you do? You, this is your, your, your blank canvas. Um, and I, I think, see my camera is still a little bit blurry. I hope it's going to come back <laughs> for me into, into sharp. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just keep going and I, I hope it's, it's going to come back uh, sharp. There, there it goes. So um, I turn mine around and you have different options. You can, you can either just take, take some coloring pencils or, or felt pens and then you can start uh, uh, decorating it. You can also, if, if you have a few uh, uh, stickers, you can, you can use them as well. Uh, I also have here some leftover from another kite I made. So what, what I cut out on the edge from, from, from another kite. So, so if you wish, you can, you can, if you are making more, you can, you could, you, you could use these as well uh, as, as a decoration. Or you can use some, some light paper. We, we, the, the important thing about the, the kite is that we have to keep it as light as possible. So we don't want to weigh it down with loads of extra things what we, what we put on it. So uh, tissue paper is a, is, 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 is a good option. Um, so I'm going to show you a few things. It's, it's up to you how, how you decorate it. If you want, you can, you can leave your uh, kite quite plain or you can, you can decorate it a little bit. Okay, so I may just do some, some eyes on mine. Uh, I'm going to do it just with, with, some, with some felt pen. And uh, because we are trying to, uh, uh, trying to keep the, the balance in the, in the kite and in the sail, if I'm going to stick anything down on it, if I stick something down on the left, I'm going to stick uh, something on the right as well. So I'm, I'm weighing it down evenly on both sides. But if you just want to stay with the, uh, with the pens, then you can, you can have different options. You can just uh, uh, section uh, up, you can make some lines over the middle and then do the same on the other side. Uh, if you want, you can, you can, you can create some, some feather-like uh, shapes uh, on the wing. It's really your, your imagination is the limit how you can, how you can decorate it. So as I said, I'm going to do the same uh, on the other side, although I'm only doing it with a pen. Okay, so I'm just going to make a decoration like that. And then if you have some, uh, if you have some lighter paper, then you can also use that. And I'm just going to show you how you can if, if you would like to cut out some uh, shapes, more of them at the same time, how you can do it, okay? So I have a paper here that I'm going to fold into half and then I'm going to fold it again. And if, if, if I want a, a size like that, then I can keep it uh, uh, at that or you can fold it again, okay? So now I'm actually uh, going to cut out eight shapes at the same time, 
Okay, so any shape what you what you feel if if it's a circle or or if you stay a little bit with the with the feather shape. I'm just going to to draw on it. So I know the the, the shape I want to follow. And with your scissors, you can cut them all out at the same time. Okay. Of course, you can mix the different uh, decoration techniques. So if you want, you can, you can uh, use some drawing, you can use some, some, some gluing as well. So you can see I, I have lots of these uh, shapes that I'm, I'm going to just uh, attach to it with some, some glue. And actually that's such a light paper that I'm going to use a little bit of uh, PVA instead because if I use the, uh, the stick, then it's going to break the, the paper for me. Okay, and I'm just going to, to arrange it on the, on the shape. And I may put a few stickers on it as well, just so I can show you the, the possibilities, how you can decorate your, your kite. Of, you, you can of course use some uh, so, some of the other colored paper as well. What you used for the for the beak and for the tail, you can you can use these as well. Okay, so as as, as you see, PVA is a little bit more wet, uh, uh, so we have to wait uh, a little bit until until that dries. Okay. And I may just leave it like that for the moment. And as I said, the decoration we can we can keep adding to it later uh, in uh, at the end. So even if you started a little bit of decoration, then maybe in two minutes we are going to stop. And then uh, we are, I'm going to show you how to do the frame. So I'm, I may just put a few, few more colored, colored stickers on it as well for, for decoration. Okay, does anyone have any questions at that stage or are you, are you doing well? Okay, and I may use some of the some of these flower stickers as well. Okay, so you can you can decorate it as as you wish. If you just like drawing, then then just do some drawing on it. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to to show you then um, how to how to move on. Okay, so. I'm going to show you how to make the how to make the frame or how to make the spine and the, the crossbars on the on the kite. Uh, as I said, uh, your options what you can use are maybe some sticks, uh, garden uh, sticks or uh, bamboo skewers or some straws. And I'm going to show you all of them how you can work with it. And I also will show you then how, what can you do if you don't have any of these. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show it to you uh, on the other side of the of, of, of your bird because we may you may want to come back and decorate it a little bit later. Okay, uh, and I'm also going to show for people who are maybe older what you can do if you would like the the strings to be on this side. But I think for for the younger ones, it's easier if if we turn it around to the other side. Okay, so the great thing about uh, this A4 size paper that if you uh, put your, your uh, one bamboo skewer on the middle of it, close to the end of the beak, and uh, it, it's okay if you leave a little bit of gap here uh, on the end, and if you put the other one across quite uh, close to the top, then you don't uh, really have to do too much with these skewers. The only thing what I, I usually do uh, here uh, is the pointy end of the skewer. So usually I just take this point off it. So I, I'm just using the scissors and just really kind of three millimeters, just the point of it, I take it off. Okay, so, so it's kind of balanced on, on both sides uh, as well. 
Okay, so if you have uh, uh, the skewers, then after you take the uh, uh, top off, then you are, you are ready with that. I'm going to show you how you attach it. If you have uh, uh, the gardening uh, um, um, sticks, the plant sticks, then you can measure approximately, again, you can leave a little bit here. You don't have to go to the end of the tail. You can put a mark there for yourself. Okay, so I'm just going to put a mark here. So that's going to be my spine. My crossbar will be again the same like on the other one. So you can leave just a, 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 a one finger width and one finger width on the other side. Uh, so you are not, and you make a mark there. Okay. And the great thing about uh, uh, this is you don't need any uh, dangerous uh, uh, tools for that. You just, uh, uh, with the scissors, you press on it two or three times. You may even turn it a little bit, okay? Two or three times just to have a little bit of a, 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 a cut on it. And then uh, you put your two fingers close to this uh, cut and then you just snap, okay? So you can, if it doesn't snap straight away, then you have to go back and then do it maybe another two or three times with a little bit of pressure. Okay, and then again, you just put your finger there and snap. Okay, so that's going to be this one. And I have another mark here for my spine. Okay, but I just double check it whether I, I see the mark well. So you take your scissors, you press it a little bit, you go around it and then snap. Okay. So if you uh, have only straws, the straw which goes down is a little bit short, so we may have to extend it. So what you have to do, you have to press a little bit the end of one of the straws, bend it a little bit, and then you just have to push it through the other end and push it a little bit that they are together uh, for a centimeter. You can even flatten it down Okay, because we don't want the air to, to go through it. And then you may want to prepare another one. Okay, again, it's good if, if where you joint it, that's at the middle. Okay, so I'm just going to put a mark on it where I have to, where I have to cut it. And then again, here it's a little bit long, so you can leave it a centimeter or two shorter. Okay, and cut. It's, it's exactly the same with the, with the straws as well, that you have to join them into each other. So you press the end of one of them, push it in through the other one. You can see it kind of goes in quite nicely and press it in approximately a finger width so it's nice and strong. So now this joint is at the middle again and you can, you can cut it shorter and then the one which goes down, you can extend that one as well a little bit with another straw, okay? So if you only have straws, that's what you do. And if you don't have a, 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 you, you don't have a straw, you don't have a stick, then what you have to do, you take a piece of paper, you put glue on it. Okay, so try to, it's better not to do this with PVA because it makes it a little bit too wet. Okay, kind of go, go with glue everywhere. And then if you have the, the glue on it, you just have to fold a tiny little corner in at the, at, the, at the edge. And we have to first just fold really, really tiny folds, really, really tiny folds until you can see that it's really, really tiny. So you are basically almost making like a straw, nice and tight, nice and tight. And then measuring it out is exactly the same like how we did it uh, with, the, with the other uh, things, with the other, the straws. Okay, so you kind of have a strong, uh, a strong tube that you can again measure. You can take the, the end off a little bit because it's a little bit thinner and do another one which goes across, 
Okay, so that's what you can do if you don't have any of the beer bar. Um, I'm going to show you the one uh, which is maybe the, the gardening um, stick, just because it can be seen nicely on the, on, on the video as well. Okay, so the first thing what we are going to do, we are going to start with the, the spine. Okay, so the spine, we have to secure the spine to the, to, to the middle. And because we are going to do the, we are going to do the, um, the strings, the, the, the bridles on it, first we are just going to tape it down at the middle. Okay, so uh, take a piece of tape, and I just have to find the, the end of mine. There it is. Okay. Just so you can see what I'm doing. So I just put it to the middle. I'm also going to do, if, if someone doesn't have tape, then you can just cut a piece uh, from, from a newspaper. You put some glue on it. Okay, put some glue on it. And just like a cellar tape, I'm going to put it on the cellar tape so, so you can you can see it. You can just nicely press it down beside the stick. Okay, so where I secured it is at the middle. Okay, for the moment I, I, it's loose on the two ends. The next thing will be we are going to put the other stick on it, kind of a finger width from the end. We don't want to put it too much to the edge, but we don't want to put it too much down either. So kind of half, okay? And this one, you can secure it on the two ends, okay? I'm just going to do it with a, with a black tape, just so you can see where I did it, because the cellar tape cannot really be seen. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that it, it, it goes the same amount of gap I leave on the two ends, and it's approximately a finger width. Okay, so I'm just going to glue it here, tape it there, and then just on the other end. Okay, and here on the other end, the distance has to be the same. Okay, because it's a small kite, we don't have to do anything here where the two, uh, uh, two sticks are meeting. If it was a bigger kite, then I probably would tie uh, some string around it and secure it a little bit. But on a kite like that, we don't have to do it. Okay, so if you are ready with that, then we are going to move on to make the uh, bridle. Um, and I may just... Uh, uh, I hope someone will tell me if I'm if I'm going too fast. But if you are, if 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 you feel that we are ready for that bit, then I'm just going to show you what comes next. So you either need some yarn, hopefully something which 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 doesn't break easily. Okay, you can also use just a, a simple sewing thread once it's strong enough, you, or you can use some uh, twine as well. Okay, so I'm going to use the twine because color-wise as well, it shows up better for you. Uh, okay, so the next thing what we are going to do, we are going to measure twice of the length of the spine. Okay, so twice the length. So I'm just going to come up in my measuring and I'm going to hold it there and I'm going to come back. It doesn't have to be uh, absolutely precise. Okay, so it's approximately twice the length of the spine, okay? You can leave a little bit on it and cut it off, okay? So what you need is twice the length of the spine, okay? So the next thing will be we have to do a few knots, Okay, we try not to do too many of them, but, but uh, uh, and if you can't tie a knot, you can just try to wrap lots of times the, the yarn around the, uh, the spine, but preferably maybe with a little bit of help, it would be good if you, if you tie the knot. So the first place where we are going to tie this will be here 
I'm going to put the, 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 the twine between the beak, between the beak and the stick, okay? And I can come down here where the two sticks are meeting. Leave a little bit of end, but the other one leave it long. And then usually I do three or four knots on it, okay? So what I do is that I, I cross them, bring the end into the loop, and pull it tight, okay? And pull it tight. I'm going to repeat it to, to, to two more times, okay? So I'm, I'm just crossing it, bringing the end into the loop, and pull it, okay? I'm going to do a third one as well, just because I, I don't want it to, uh, to uh, open up when I'm flying my kite, okay? So you can do three or you can do uh, uh, four if you wish. So the shorter end, you can, you can cut it. Don't cut it too close to the knot because you don't want to, uh, uh, it to undo. So kind of leave maybe a centimeter and you can cut it off, okay? So the next one, we are going to tie the other end approximately two or three fingers, kind of almost where the where the, uh, the tail meets the, the body. Where the length of it has to be that when I pull the, uh, when I hold the, the uh, yarn and I pull it close to the edge, I'm kind of drawing a triangle, okay? So once you can do that and kind of you arrive to the edge of the, uh, edge of the wing, then that's the length where you have to do the knot, okay? Again, we are going to put the, the, the yarn under the stick, okay, under the stick in between the, the paper and the stick. And using the shorter end, I'm going to do the same like I did up. So I'm going to cross them. I bring the end into the loop and pull it tight, okay? Before you would do your next two knots, just check it that when you pull your, your string up, the, uh, and it comes out straight on the bar, it's approximately meeting at the end of the, the wing, okay? That it's not way too long uh, because the bridle has to be kind of that size. So once you checked it, if, if you have to adjust it, you can still adjust it. If not, then you are going to do another two knots, okay? So you, you cross them over, bring the end into the, uh, the end and pull it tight. And I'm just going to do a third one. Okay, and then I'm going to here the short, uh, the, the shorter part, I can cut it leaving approximately a centimeter, don't cut it way too close. Okay, so once we are done that, it's really important that, that, that there's one more knot which kind of makes the really the, the, um, the, the bird fly. Okay, so as you can see my triangle, I'm, I'm, I'm coming out here where the stick is and it goes down. So then I just have to pinch it here and bring it to the middle, holding it a little bit lower down. So here is where I pinched it. We have to do a knot on it, okay? So I'm going to just make a loop and bring the end in and pull it tight that I leave a little loop there at the end, so I can, I can kind of put my fingers through it, okay? And pull it tight, okay? So I, I have here a little loop, okay? I'm just checking it again, that hopefully it goes up there. If not, then you can pull it up a little bit uh, uh, if, it, if it's uh, not a, a triangle coming to the end, okay? So that's your, that's your bridal. So now that we've done that, now that we can uh, fully secure Okay, I slow down a little bit. Uh, what, where, where would you like me to go back? I can, I can. Hi, Gabby. Yeah, if you could just repeat that, that step again would be great. Okay, so I'm going to take it off, okay? So I can, I can show you again. Okay, so what we did, we measured out twice the length of the spine, okay? So twice the length of the spine. Once you have that, you cut that yarn. And then one uh, uh, end goes to the beak. 
So you just have to lift it up so you, you are on the, on the stick, but, but not on the paper. And then you bring it down where the two bars uh, cross. That's actually the, the, the most difficult part of the kite. After that, there is nothing complicated in it, okay? But it's, it's good to get this right. Okay, so you have a little bit of uh, an end on it. And then you are going to tie it three times. So you cross across it, bring the end into the loop, and pull it tight. And then you are going to do it two more times. So we are doing it three times, okay? So into the loop and pull it tight. And then third time. Okay, the shorter bit, you can cut it a bit shorter, but leave a centimeter. Okay, then uh, because the, the, the uh, when the, when the, the uh, kite is flying, it has to be, it cannot, it has to be in an angle. Uh, that's why this bit, this bridle tying is an important one. So you bring it out here beside your, your uh, crossbar and we'll, you will bring it down here somewhere where the, where the tail and the body meet. So you are kind of getting a triangle here. Then you have to put this end under the, uh, under the stick. Check, uh, and then you can do your first knot, coming into the loop, pulling it tight, but just kind of gently, because first let's just see whether, whether, whether it's uh, the right length. And I can see that it's a little bit, uh, 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 I have to loosen it back a little bit and pull it back. So I pulled it a little bit too, too short. Okay, and then you finish your other uh, two knots here. Okay, so once once the the size is uh, right, you tie two more, and then we cut it as well a centimeter five. So, in order to know where you have to put the knot here. You don't put it to the middle because then it doesn't fly. It has to be a little bit up higher. Uh, that's why we, we measure where it is. So here is your yarn. You bring it out to the edge of the, of the wing uh, uh, at the line of the crossbar. You pinch it there. So that's, that will be the, the middle of your, of, of your knot. Okay. And then you just make a, a, a loop. You make a loop bring the end in it and pull it tight that you only have enough little, little gap there that you can put your finger in it, okay? And then we just double check it that this is where, where it stands, okay? So after we finish that, we can, we can uh, continue securing a little bit the, the sticks. Certainly what I usually do, I, I, I put some sellotape uh, or, or I, I tape the, the end of, of every stick. And then sometimes I do a little bit here beside the, uh, beside the cross as well. I'm going to do it in black as well, so you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to put it here to the end. Okay, you can even come down a little bit. Going to and I'm going to do the end as well. That should be enough, but of course, if you want to be extra careful, you can you can you can put uh, at other parts as well. But certainly, where you need one is here, where your where your knot is, because you don't want this knot to move. And if you put a, a sellotape above it, then it's not going to move away, okay? So I'm just going to put here one above the knot, one tape on the, on the stick, okay? So that's how so far it looks like, okay? So after that, if you wish, um, you can go back to, to decorating as well, but what, what we are going to do now, we need a line that we can fly the kite. 
Uh, you can use the same yarn and uh, uh, I usually how I measure out my lengths is that I open up my arm, which I can't really show on the full camera, but maybe the shadow shows it. So I open up my full uh, arm and I just uh, take that as a length. That's approximately one and a half meters. It's good to do maybe a three meters. I'm going to open up my arm again and measure one more length. So that will be three meters. If you, if you uh, uh, just uh, going to fly your kite in the garden, the three meters is enough. If you have a, a, a park close by, you can even make six meters of it because these kites usually fly really, really well. So this is only a three meter length now. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this, uh, the bridle and uh, into this little loop, I'm going to tie it into it. So I just thread it through it and I'm going to tie again, three knots. Okay, so one, two, three, and I use this little loop to tie it into. Okay, the, the short end, you can cut it off and that's your, your kite basically uh, could already uh, fly, except for we need the tail because we, have, we, we need for balance. So uh, what I usually do with, the, with this string that I take the other end of it and I'm just uh, tying it on a piece of stick or you can, you can use just a piece of cardboard, okay? Because uh, you don't want this uh, uh, line to tangle. So again, you can just tie three knots on the, on the stick or uh, if, if you, uh, you can just sellotape the end down as well or, or tape it down. So I'm just going to do three knots just to secure it. I'm going to just cut the short end off. Okay, so I just tied it to the stick and now you just wind it up. It's the same with the, with the, the paper uh, or, or the cardboard piece as well that you can just uh, wind it up okay and if you you can ask an adult they they can cut a little cut at the middle of your stick which means that when you are not flying your kite you can you can pull the the yarn into this gap and then it's not going to uh not going to uh unravel okay so then your spool is kind of secure if you can if you can um make a little cut at the end of the, of the uh, spool. Okay, so that's how far we got so far. And uh, the last thing is really to make the tail uh, for your kite. The tail, you can make it from lots of different, uh, different materials. You can use, uh, if you have at home some, uh, if you have at so home some ribbon, you can use that, okay? If you don't have some ribbons, uh, then you can just uh, cut strips of newspaper. We need a good length for, for a kite to really fly really well. You need, again, almost your open arm length, which is uh, one and a half meters. So if you have shorter pieces, then you just uh, glue them together to create a long, long, long tail. Okay, so I'm just have another strip of, of, of newspaper. And then I just attach it until it gets as long as my, as my open arm. Okay, so I just uh, folded it into half. Or you can, you can of course, if, if you have some, some uh, uh, crepe paper, you can cut some, some tail from this as well. So you can take a, a piece and then just cut through the roll. And it's going to give you a nice long piece, piece of tail. Okay. So the next thing is once you measured out your, your tail, I, I may just put lots of different colors on it. So a piece of, you can mix and match things. So I have a long piece of ribbon. I have a, a long piece of uh, uh, newspaper. 
And it's important that when you do this, you are, again, when you put the tail on, that it will be the same on both sides. So if you put a, a, a ribbon here, you put a ribbon here. If you put a, a, a newspaper here, you put a newspaper here as well, okay? It's important to, uh, to, to balance it out. So I'm just going to glue this together, this newspaper. So I have two of the newspapers. Okay, so you can use either your sellotape or your, or your glue. And on the tail, as I said, if you put one newspaper here, then I'm going to put one strip of newspaper here. I may put the, put the ribbon to the middle and because I don't really have too much space there to, to, to glue it, I'm just going to secure it with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of sellotape as well. Okay, and you just, uh, uh, you can, uh, if, you, if your kite has three, three long uh, tails, usually th this is enough. Uh, but uh, the test is when you start flying it. If you feel, uh, usually if, if, if a kite starts wobbling uh, left to right, that means that, that, that it's not balanced out. So you may have to put a little bit more tail on it. Uh, but if your, if your uh, kite doesn't really want to take up, that means that it may be too heavy. So then you may have to take a little bit of uh, a tail off, okay? So I'm just going to, to, to sellotape it here. And I have a long piece of, 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 this, uh, of this scrap paper, long enough. I have two strands of it. So I'm just going to, to glue it here to the middle, okay? I'm showing you all the different variations and you can, you can use just one of them or you can, you can just, uh, uh, or, or you can, you can mix and match and, and uh, okay, so the, the last one comes here, okay? So basically your kite would be ready now, other than if you decide that you may want to put some more decoration on it. So at that stage, if you want, because the sticks are already on it, it may be a little bit more, uh, uh, difficult to draw it. So just be careful that you don't pierce through your paper. Okay. And uh, one of the nice ideas is if you, if you make a long tail for your, uh, for your kite, I have one which my sister brought me uh, from Japan long, long ago. Okay. This is, this is one, uh, uh, a little square one. Uh, and uh, it was really nicely hand painted. And uh, although I don't speak Japanese, so I'm not exactly sure what's written on it, but there is something nice written on the tail. So if you, if you would like, you can, you can write something, uh, your, your family uh, members' names, or you can just uh, write some good wishes on, on, on the tail uh, of, the, uh, of the kite. I said to you that you can, you can use some uh, strips of fabric as well. So if you would like to, to attach as a tail uh, uh, some, some fabric uh, pieces, then you can take a piece of, uh, uh, you can take kind of, again, your open arm length of yarn. Okay, so you can just take a long, long yarn and you can start tying the fabrics on it in, in a distance. Okay, keeping the, the length of it. And uh, on some of my kites, I only use this. On, on some of them, I, 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 I mix them together. So you can keep tying them down and then you can attach it then to the tail. Okay, so please repeat last one minute. Uh, uh, making that tail, I, I think that's what, what uh, the last minute must have been. Okay, so some of my, my kites uh, have a tail. I'm going to show you one here. Okay, I have a big kite here, which has a tail, which only has some fabric tied, fa fabric strips tied to uh, a yarn. So what, what I, I would do, I would just measure out uh, uh, one and a half meters, which is my open arm length. And then 
you can start uh, tying uh, your strip to the to the yarn and put it nice and tight okay and then you can space it out and you can put six seven of them and then you can if you wish you can attach that one as well to the tail so when it flies it, it has a nice kind of movement and 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 lovely uh, colors as well okay so uh i may just uh, we are kind of getting there that uh, your kite may be may be uh, finished i'm just going to uh, show you a few other ones as well okay so uh this is the one which we which we made uh, today this one was just made with a with, with a piece of uh, a plastic bag okay and uh, even the tail because it's very very light even the tail would, was made uh, from uh, plastic bags i decorated it with some uh, with some stickers and and uh, i hope you are all staying uh, safe so I, I wrote that on, on, on the tail of that. Um, if you like coloring, then you can, you can decorate your, your, your butterfly, or it could be a butterfly that looks a little bit more like a butterfly than a bird. So you can, you can decorate it with some, with some uh, coloring as well. And then you can see that this one has a, a two longer, bit heavier ribbon uh, tail uh, on it. And uh, I think I, I, I told you as well that you can, you can do the strings on the other side of the kite as well. So anyone who is older, uh, you can see that here is my frame, but my, my uh, bridle is not here. So if I want it to be on the other side, then I usually just put two pieces of sellotape there where I'm going to do it. And uh, using a, a, a thick uh, needle, usually a darning needle that I can, uh, a thick needle that I can thread my yarn. I'm just going, uh, uh, I'm putting them exactly to the same place where I would do it on the other side, but I just feed the, the yarn through with the needle and I bring it back to this side so I can do the knot on this side and the same here as well. Okay, because why that could be nice is that when, when you let up your kite, the kite is facing uh, down toward you and it's nice to see the pattern. But of course, it's, it's equally nice if, if, if the, the decoration is on the other side. Okay, I think uh, uh, that's, that's your kite, uh, your, your, your kite ready. So uh, I'm going to show you, I, I think the other uh, interesting thing is uh, uh, how to fly your kite. Of course, you can fly a kite by uh, running with it, but then you don't see what your kite is doing. So you don't know whether it's catching them. I could not see which part. Um, if, 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 uh, if you see whether, whether, whether uh, someone needs any, any stage to be repeated, but uh, uh, I'm going to show you how you can fly your kite, okay? Because it's much better to fly your kite if you, if you stand behind the wind and then you just pull it up. Uh, so I'm going to change over and I'm going to show you how that's done. Uh, because launching a kite is, is, is just as important part of, um, of uh, kite flying than the kite making itself. So there it is. So when you are launching your kite, when you are launching your, your, your kite, the best thing to do is to really watch which way the, the wind is blowing. And then once you check how, how the wind is blowing, then you have to stand. Uh, there it is you have to stand that the wind is coming toward your back, okay? The next thing is you put down the, the kite on the ground, approximately two meters far from you. I think by now everyone really knows how, many, how much two meters are uh, because of our social distancing. And uh, the kite's tail is facing you 
And of course, the, the string and the, the bridle is facing up, okay? And then you start pulling up your kite that it can catch the wind. And then once it's up, then you can actually see your kite, how it's flying. And if the wind is changing, then you can adjust a little bit. You can pull it a little bit left or right. One of the, the safety things is that uh, we are hoping that you are going to fly your kite uh, this Saturday, but uh, flying your kite should be safe as well. So you don't start running in a garden where there are lots of garden furniture and uh, you may trip over anything. You can't fly your kite either close to an ele electricity line because uh, uh, that can be very dangerous. Uh, and it's really important as well. That's why uh, we, we only use some wood, paper, or some plastic, even in the making of the kite. So they are as safe as they can be uh, for you. Thank you very much, everyone. But if you have any questions, or if, uh, if you would like me to show any of the stages, then please give me a shout, okay? Thanks so much, Gabby. Um, yeah, we're getting lots of lovely comments from everyone who are saying that their kites are flying. So uh, they've obviously gone out and tested those in the well, back already. You don't even have to go out to fly it. I, I, I was flying them in my kitchen, but of course, don't fly it in your kitchen. Go out instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting everyone saying thank you so, so much. Um, lots of comments. Some people were telling me earlier on that they were making diamond shaped kites. Another one was like bird shapes, so lots of different types are coming our way. Um, just a reminder to everyone that we would love to see um, all the images of your kites. Uh, so if you could send them, our email address again is getirelandmaking at dcci.ie. Um, if you are out on Saturday for Crinion and Oak, please do tag us in your posts. So that is hashtag Creative Ireland and hashtag Get Ireland Making. Um, any pictures that we are receiving, we're going to do our best and share them on our social media and on our websites. So we'd love to hear um, from everyone and we'd love to see you all out flying your kites on the 13th. Um, brilliant. We're getting some really lovely everyone saying thank you so much, Gabby. You're very welcome. <laughs> Um, yeah, everyone's going to be great. We're, we're hearing lovely responses and glad to see that everyone will be out on the 13th. Would love to say a big thank you to everyone for joining us today. There was lots of you on and um, you all seem to follow it really well. Um, and I think that we can all say that is because Gabby was just a pro at taking us through all the steps. Thank you so much, Gabby. Um, you are brilliant patience bringing us through each step again and again. One person just asked, can't get the yarn uh, for the kite, can you send on the link or photo how to do it again? So, um, so she's asking how to put the yarn onto the kite. Yeah, so um, yeah, we can, again, Evelyn will be posting this up on our YouTube channel. You hopefully might be able to see it a little bit clearer again if you can watch it back. And apologies for the, the, for the camera zooming a little bit in and out. I, um, sometimes it, it just does its own thing. <laughs> exactly. And but then somebody else is asking, yeah, we will be having the recording up on our YouTube channel. So again, um, the link I put in, everyone can just follow that through and you can see um, the recordings there. Um, and then finally, before we finish up, just a reminder that we have one more workshop happening this week on Thursday at three o'clock, that is with Ed Devan and it's called Musical Kite. We hope you can all join us. Um, it'd be lovely for um, another big audience again. And everyone's asking the channel, the channel for YouTube is Design and Crafts Council Ireland. I'll just get the link as well. I've just put it in there. And um, you can also go onto our website, which is www.dcci.ie forward slash let's go fly a kite so you can follow that as well and yeah one last question what is Thursday's workshop for it is for musical kite with Ed Devan and the age for that is 10 plus because it's a little bit more advanced um, but he'll be showing you how to make kites again that you can use on Saturday as well so if you'd like to make a different type of kite and have some different variations and um, please do join us 
Okay, I, I think that's all the questions. If you have any other questions, um, please email us at getirelandmaking at dcci.ie. Once again, a huge thank you to you, Gabby, for the workshop today. It was really lovely. Uh, lots of different types of kites that can be made and colours, and I can't wait to see what everyone makes, lots of different ribbons. Um, and even in your background there, you can see, you know, everyone can see as well, you've got a fish on your kite, you've got lots of different kites in your background as well bit of inspiration for everyone okay so we're going to finish up there thanks so much everyone again for joining us um, and we hope to see you all again soon thank you we'll just say a quick goodbye okay thanks everyone take care bye, bye. <laughs>